so killed and then now killed that we have here this particular killed is no longer just a past tense verb again but rather the past participle form don't forget that when we look at the verb kill it's kill killed and killed so present tense past tense and past participle so the past participle form of the verb kill is still killed so although it seems very similar to this so what we have as the past tense it is still not a past tense verb so you have the be verb was be verb and then you have the past participle form of the verb be of the verb or of the lexical verb rather now coming together becomes what we call the passive verb of phrase so how do you know a passive verb of phrase you know a passive verb of phrase by this formula the formula a b verb any form of the b verb at all plus a verb in its past participle form let me give you another example of this so you have um let me give you one she stole the money now in a sentence she stole the money this is an active sentence obviously as you can see now we look at what we have here the money the money was stolen was stolen by her so now stole is the active verb of phrase was stolen is the passive verb of phrase so stole is in its past tense you have steal stole stolen right so steal is your present tense stole is your past tense and stolen is your past participle so what we actually have in the passive verb of phrase is the addition or the insertion insertion of a be verb be verb then plus the changing or the exchange of the whatever type of verb we have in the active sentence whatever type of the verb we have in the active sentence there will be an exchange of that particular type of verb to the past participle form of the verb itself so that's what we have as the past participle form so be verb plus a verb in its en form now en does not have to be the um, not all of the verbs change to have an en form so some other scholars call it ed also but then we know that the ed um, so they actually specifically call it ed2 whereby ed1 is for past tense and then ed2 is for past participle but whichever way the summary is that we have a be verb plus a verb in its past participle form so that's what we call the passive verbal phrase so the active verbal phrase the active verbal phrase which is a predicate or becomes changed to a passive verb phrase which is formed by the addition of any form of the primary auxiliary verb B to the existing verb of phrase host lexical verb not gets changed to its past participle form so that's how we that's the second transmission process that occurs in the formation of passive sentence so if the first one is what we have the active object becomes the passive subject then we have active verb phrase becomes a passive verb phrase and then and that is by a transmissional process which is called insertion because it's the insertion of a beaver then we have number three three we have the active subject the active subject now becomes an optional optional by agentive adjunct in the passive sentence now what do we mean by thoughts let's go back to the same example we've always used now look at this example here that we have here David David is the subject of the active sentence am I right now by David is no longer a subject here but rather an adjunct so we say that 
the active subject becomes an optional agentive adjunct in the passive so the active subject instead of being a subject now and of course instead of being an object so that's why we can't do, instead of being a subject now it becomes an adjunct but then this particular adjunct is what we call an agentive adjunct what do you mean by agentive adjunct that is an adjunct the agentive adjunct means that the adjunct shows the agent or the performer or the subject of the sentence so the agentive adjunct sorry the agentive adjunct shows the agent or performer of the action so that's just so the active subject now becomes an optional by it and what we say it is optional is that we don't necessarily need it to be there in the sentence we don't need it to be in the sentence so it may be present it may not be present so it is optional but it is usually introduced by the preposition by so that's why we call it a by agentive adjunct a by agentive adjunct because it is usually introduced by the predicate and by the preposition by so do you understand that so that's why we say that and then the adjunct is of course optional like i've explained to you because it may be included and it may not be included so we could actually instead of instead of saying well what did we say here we said the lion was killed by david instead of saying that we could actually have just said the lion was killed do you understand that so it's correct and we could still say the lion was killed by David. So whichever we say, it's the both passive sentence. The most important thing is that we have what we call a passive verbal phrase. A passive verbal phrase. And this would lead me to take telling you something that you should take note of. Take note of this. Take note of this. It's very important. Like it's a secret I just want to give you. So take note of it and make sure you don't forget this I'm about to say. Now, what is that? Now, note that the surest way to know a passive sentence is by the presence of a passive verbal phrase. The surest way to know a passive sentence is by the presence of a passive verbal phrase every other means may not be reliable every other means let me write that for you also every other means may not be reliable now what do we mean by this now look at this let's go up a bit now in the sentence the lion was killed was killed is a passive verbal phrase am i right how do you know it's a passive verbal phrase it has a be verb and it has a verb that is in its past participle form so even if you, even in situations where you have a, a verb that that, that that does not differ if in its past tense and past participle form the idea is that on a normal day we are not supposed to have a be verb coming before a past tense verb so immediately you see a be verb coming before a verb that shows that that, that a verb in which you're actually confused whether the verb is its past tense or past participle form immediately you see a be verb coming before that particular verb know that that verb is that lexical verb is in its past participle form and that verbal phrase is a passive verbal phrase now so the shortest way to know a passive sentence is by the presence of a passive verbal phrase if the passive verbal phrase is not present that sentence is not a passive sentence it is not so that you have an instance where, you, where, where something that is your subject actually seems to be the one undergoing the action still does not necessarily mean that the sentence is a passive sentence and then that you have something that is being introduced by a by does also still not mean that a sentence is still a passive sentence. 
I don't even get what I'm trying to say. Now, what I'm trying to explain better so that you don't make mistakes in situations like this. Let me give you an example. Now, look at this sentence. The door opened. Now, when we say the door opened, in this sentence, the door is your subject, if I'm not mistaken, and then opened is your predicator. Are we together? Of course. So now, look at the door. Is the door performing an action? No. The door is not performing an action here. However, the door is actually the run undergoing the action of being opened. That's why I so told you that sometimes description or definition may actually not be 100% correct. Now look at our definition of a passive sentence. We said that a passive sentence is one in which the subject is actually the one undergoing the action. Here we have a subject being the one undergoing the action by the predicator. However, we are still saying that this sentence is not a passive sentence. Why? Because this sentence does not contain a passive verb phrase. Why? Opened is not a passive verb phrase. It should have been something like, if it had been, the door was opened. Now, now look at these two sentences. In these two sentences, the door is still the one undergoing the process of being opened. However, in this one, it is this is a passive sentence. Passive. But this is still an active sentence. This is still an active, sorry. An active sentence because the predicator is an active verbal phrase well the predicator here is a passive verbal phrase did you get it let me give you another thing that justifies so i've told you that that you see a subject undergoing an action does not mean that sentence is still passive let me give you another one now look at this we rent by a now look at an instance of something that almost looks like a by agentive agent. Of course, it is being introduced by the preposition by. However, this is not a by agentive agent because we have a by agentive agent only in a passive verb phrase. So, for us to have a by agentive agent, the sentence must have contained a passive verb phrase. So, that means that by a, yes, since there is no b verb coming before this particular predicator, then that tells us that by a here is not a, an agentive agent, and this sentence is still an active sentence and not a passive sentence. So, by a here is just an adverb of means. An adverbial phrase of means. So that's just it. Sorry, that was a mistake. So, but a here is just an adverbial phrase of means. Do you understand that? I believe you fully understand this topic. So, the next topic, or better still, the next subtopic we want to go through under this is we said we want to look at. The description so we've looked at the description of the passive sentence we've also looked at the transformational processes that take place in the formation of a passive sentence so the next thing we want to look at is the conditions for passive transformation so what are the conditions for that an active sentence must have oh sorry we've gotten to the end of our board so let me just delete one or two things let me delete this part of the description of passive sentence. So, I believe you've been enjoying the class so far. I totally, I surely believe you actually have been enjoying the class so far. And then we are still not forget in our class on the English grammar. And what we're looking at today is the passive sentence. The passive sentence. And then we've talked about one or two things. We've talked about the description of the passive sentence, and then we've talked about the transformational processes that occur in the formation of a passive sentence. So one of the transformational processes is that there is the movement of the active object from the position it always 
has always been to the position of the active and passive subject. Another transmission process is that there is an increase of the verbal phase or in the verbal phase because we always have an addition of the auxiliary P verb to the verbal phase for us to be able to have a passive verbal phase. And then another thing is that there is the an active subject now becomes an optional by identity. So that means that even there is the insertion also of a preposition by 